what's going on guys big vp back with another game case arcades video on this one today we got a 32 inch upright going out to a retail space the green room new jersey may has been a crazy month busy month uh as i approach it there's about two more days left of may uh most of may i've been in new jersey um finally got rid of the Atari cabinet, which I was gonna make a video on it, but it was gonna be short. Basically, I sold that Atari cabinet. That was the one where a guy basically messaged me and then said, oh, JK, never mind." Luckily, somebody picked it up, but the person that actually picked it up turned out to be a Pandora's box user. Uh, he basically downgraded it, I should say, to a Pandora's box, so I removed the Raspberry Pi. I can show you you know, quick pictures here. Uh, basically, took out, I took out the Raspberry Pi and put Pandora's boxes, so luckily, the Atari cabinet is out and I have more room in the shop, but we're gonna focus today on this one, which is the Green Room out in New Jersey. Um, basically, it's a CBD retailer. They have a couple of spots. Uh, and again, like I said, in May, May's been Jersey month. I mean, I've been in Jersey most of the month. You got uh, Magic Moments build, you got Jane's build. This is the last build for the month of May. Again, this is going out to the Green Room out in New Jersey, Hoboken specifically. If you do look up the Green Room, there are a lot of locations. Basically, it's a CBD retailer. Um, I'm not familiar with that business. I don't really know too much. I'm, I'm into arcades. So somebody messaged me and said, hey Vic, we want an arcade in our shop, let's talk. So it's pretty cool how it started out. It started out on Facebook, got a Facebook message from Joe. Joe, then we, met, we basically moved to Instagram because he wanted to get kind of a group chat going on with a couple of other, I guess, heads uh, in New Jersey. And uh, basically they set up on a 32 inch upright. Um, big thing that they told me is that they said basically, Victor, this is going to be in a retail space. Customers could come in, hang out, enjoy some gaming while they're checking out their products. Once you mention retail space and customers, I always suggest the Pandora's box. Pandora's box is just something where you really can't mess it up. They are really built and designed to be actual arcade PCBs, I like to say, although this isn't technically a PCB, but to me it is arcade hardware meaning this is designed to be stay to be on 24 7 stay on 24 7 it is 2 30 in the morning and i gotta shoot these videos before this goes out tomorrow i do notice i had excuse me in my couple of videos i gotta kind of slow it down a little bit but these cabinets gotta go um you know i'm grateful for people finding me on facebook instagram youtube i am very grateful for everybody checking me out and again subscribing and following me and everything so shout out to you guys for watching i hope you guys are enjoying it I do know that yes, lately, um, you know, I've been kind of slurring or I've been kind of uh, wonky. I watched my last video and I basically said something about The Simpsons, but I wasn't playing The Simpsons. Um, again, with uh, you know, with the new addition to the family, uh, she's not letting me sleep. But <laughs> we still got to get arcade builds out. I still got to get these things done. So this is going out tomorrow morning. Uh, basically, just completed it last night, yesterday, I should say, and uh, now just going through final details. Like I said before, whenever you mention retail space, customers, kind of basically people walking up to this thing to play, I always suggest the Pandora's box build because Pandora's boxes were really designed to be multi-cade arcade replacements. You know, if you had, let's say, a Street Fighter cabinet, you could put a Pandora's box in it, and now it went from one game to 4,500 games. So anytime you mention retail space, especially when you want coin-operated, Always, I always suggest the Pandora's box. I stay far away from Raspberry Pis and PC builds when it comes to strangers and retail spaces and you know gaming. Basically with those type of builds, somebody could come in, probably get into the menu as far as settings or exit the, the front end. Now you get a headache. Again, the main objective with Pandora's box is that they're basically indestructible. You could literally unplug this thing while the game is playing, you could plug back in, and it will just boot up exactly how it should, just like a real arcade PCB should. So now focusing back on the build, the customers did request a coin door on this. So I did grab a X Arcade coin door. I do like X Arcade's coin doors. Game of Solutions has a coin door, but I feel like it's a cheap Chinese model. Um, X Arcade is the way to go. This is a single slot coin door, whereas Jane has a double dual slot. Uh, real reason I did that for Jane was because she's running a, a Raspberry Pi. So there are games such as uh, Simpsons and TMNT, which is set to four player. So if she put the quarter in on the left side, it would have activated March. 
If you put the quarter in the right side, player two, it would have activated Homer. So that's why I did the coin door two slot on her build. On this build for Pandora's box, I, all you really need is a single slot. That's why I didn't get them the dual slot. I kept it easy with a single slot. Um, but obviously when you do get the coin doors, there are some customers that kind of want to resort back to using the button that's on the control panel for the coin. So some people might be like, oh, why is there a coin button on the control panel? Again, these are really meant for home use, but you could put them in a retail space. So when, whenever it comes time, when I do deliver, I'll ask the customer what they want. Basically, it's just a simple kind of unhooking of the micro switch, just like that. This way you do have the LED still active and coin button just doesn't work anymore. It's a very simple, very simple unhooking. Um, so if the customer does want it where customers have to pay for it, they will have to put a coin in it. But if you guys remember, if you go back to the Casa and Bodega build, I always do this anytime for retail space. I do have a secret little micro switch button here, right? You can see it right there. This way, in case, uh, you know, somebody's said that their quarter got stuck instead of going now to go and grab a key you know to unlock the door you can basically just come right here and hit the switch and you put a coin in so really cool little little details that help out um again in my business i used to, we we have i i built four uh two v pins and two 40 inch screen kind of diy uh arcade setups and uh you know people lose their quarters now i gotta go and grab the key and you know i gotta unlock it and i gotta find the key and all that so luckily i always think way ahead so this little micro switch does save a lot of time and patience and it's a little secret kind of micro switch so now again looking at the x arcade uh coin door you do always get a pair of keys i always like to kind of show off the coin door so i do have a quarter i'm going to drop it in Always gotta like that little kind of coin drop sound. And as you can see, the credit registers. Again, there's something about uh, the X Arcade's micro switch they use. It's just it's just so smooth, um, you know, very easy. And again, very important to note, clean wiring. These doors you could swing open. You gotta make sure you always give a little bit of slack to the wiring uh, and such. So they will get the key. Basically, I do have the coin door wiring here linked to this coin button up top so if they do decide to disconnect this button meaning remove it the coin door will obviously still work real quick we talk about artwork that i did um take a look real quick first always that's like the big thing it's all about theming so again it's a retail space company name is the green room their logo and everything is green and white so in the beginning i thought they wanted a white cabinet with just their logos but Joe said, no, Vic, we want actual arcade characters. We want it to be cool. And, you know, we don't want just a plain white cabinet. So if you do look very carefully, you might recognize Jane's artwork. You know, have the Game Room Solutions with Centipede and Donkey Kong, my Street Fighter crew down below. But we did add obvious things such as company logos. We got our very um, high in the clouds, Mushroom Kingdom, Mario. I found this pretty funny, the Pac-Man kind of theming uh, again customer wanted arcade multi -cade characters characters that you'll find on the pandora's box and i think it worked out pretty well they do have like three or four different variations of their logo they did provide high resolution logo so it always looks good to make sure giving me high resolution images this way it all looks clean no fuzziness Take a look at the marquee. The marquee I left plain definitely. That was actually one of their logos. They have like this wide one. And I was like, oh, that right there all day marquee uh, for that logo specifically. As you go like down below, they do have like this big one here, basically going with the theming of a lot of logos. This way people know it is from the green room. You can see again, control panel, almost identical to Jane's, basically adding logos down in the middle. Got the multi cade kick plate. Got Pac-Man Big right there on the bottom. Again, same thing with Jane's, basically kind of duplicating it. Right side, almost identical. We flipped Pac-Man. And I found this one pretty funny. The freshly baked Homer. <laughs> Again, details, details, details. Artwork, I think, came out amazing on this. 
Only big thing again with the 32 inch cabinet is that Gaming Solutions it's two separate pieces. So you will see the line. It's not too drastic. Once you step back, you don't really see it, but up close you do see it. Now, one quick comment in regards to Gaming Solutions. I don't know why, but they sent me a seven button layout. And uh, honestly, it doesn't really affect too much. So I, I didn't really decide to complain about it. We just, I just kept it. Basically, I have button seven here mapped to button one. It's actually a jumper wire going here. So I guess it's cool. Games like uh, Galaga, instead of using this button, you could basically use button one or button seven. Uh, again, not sure why they sent me seven buttons. The artwork I sent only had six buttons, but I don't think it was really worth complaining. It's more LEDs. It looks, it looks cool. And again, luckily, the way I wire it, that seventh button is actually active. Got green and white bad tops led lighting on this white and green buttons kind of you can see the mix match green side player one white side player two all in all i've been sending them pictures like on instagram and the owners are like stoked they're like they, they can't wait to to get this cabinet so once i send them artwork and they're all excited about it and then i send pictures of like the progress anytime i get positive feedback of like oh man vic this is sick post more pictures I know that they're going to be basically happy customers. Again, going with the theming of green, I, I chose green team molding. They basically put their trust in me. Uh, and I think it looks awesome. I mean, the green room, you can't get any more green than that. It does have a nice glow. Again, LED lighting uh, marquee. We do have the underglow for the kick plate here. So when the lights go out, it will definitely glow. Turn off the garage lights. So again, this thing definitely glows. Always got to put the LED strip for the kick plate, always for the marquee, that's the biggest one. And the LED buttons, it, it really glows. I mean, in person, you know, let's say they do want to leave this on 24 seven and the lights are off in the shop or in the store, this thing will definitely catch a lot of eyes. Again, just a quick note, clean wiring as always, got to keep it clean and needy. The four buttons here, the admin buttons, yes, I didn't put any labels. They are not active. They don't do anything. Basically, it's future proof if they want to basically put a Raspberry Pi or a PC into it. But you can see our Pandora's box, LED controller. This is a 32 inch TV. So this does have the TV remote. Um, I actually have one person in a retail space pizzeria that they hooked up like a, a DVD player to it. So sometimes it's arcade and then sometimes it's just promo. So. It is a TV. It is not a smart TV. I could put a smart TV in for extra, you know, fee, but this is a regular HD TV. It is perfect for Pandora's boxes. So now this is running the Z313 Logitech speakers. So I do have the rocker switch here. That's really the best place to put it. Um, customers, I mean, really, I, you know, I don't really want them to lift this too much, but then again, you could because the wiring is clean. No need to worry about pulling out any wires, but Usually that's the best area to put the kind of rocker switch for the volume. Um, take a look at the back real quick because we're talking about wiring. Open up the back panel here. And as you can see, clean wiring as always, LED strips, subwoofer. We have basically this LED strip right here is to the Pandora's box. And the other one is for the LED glow. So again, just looking at like the Pandora's box, I know I play like a lot of like uh, Street Fighter and all that, but this will play like your main classics. I mean, a lot of fighting games on this. King of Fighters, as you can see, we're gonna load up Marvel vs. Capcom. I mean, this is like classic stuff. So if I add more coins, I could get player two involved. And as you can see, basically get some two player action going on here. Again, the Pandora's box definitely has most, if not all, your classics that you're thinking about. Uh, a lot of fighting games. Uh, as you can see, there is MAME and Final Burn Alpha. Uh, this is the all category list. And as you can see, there's just the main thing, like the first part of the list is all fighting games. Uh, and then later on, it gets into like shmups and it gets into, you know, beat em ups and all that. So as you can see, this right now, Samurai Showdown classic Neo Geo game. Again, you're gonna get definitely get all your arcade classics in this. On guard, let's do it. 
Oh my god, how? What just happened? Just got my butt kicked. <laughs> Again. <laughs> got no chance. She's flying. Okay, all right. Well, I embarrassed myself with that. That's why I usually stick to Street Fighter and I could do my one-handed Hadoukens, but <laughs> at least for you guys, we'll show off a little bit something else. Like, you know, you got 1942. We'll load that up real quick. Again, a lot of classics. And again, like I said, I do have this button here mapped to button one. So as you can see, if I do button one is shoot and button seven is also shoot. Games like this, there are two buttons. So that you do have actually second button will do the backflip. And again, just enjoying classics. This is what this machine is really meant for is to play the classics. So again, if I exit out, again, so many games to it. There's just a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot of games to it. Um, definitely, like I said, there's, 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 a, there's quite a handful that I wouldn't even expect in an arcade cabinet. Granted, again, I haven't tested all 4,500 games on this, but there is a way to turn off games if they don't work. I don't know how many people see know this, but Circus Charlie, uh, If I'm 30 years old, so me growing up, we didn't have Chuck E. Cheese. Uh, in New York, there was a place called, it was either the Kid Zone or the Kid's Place 2. That was basically all arcade, and this honestly was probably my first ever arcade game. Just to get through the hoops and go through the stages, I burned the lion, damn it. <laughs> this was honestly my first ever one. If you guys want to hear another story, um, again, in our business, we had a guy um, that we had a couple arcade cabinets in our business at the gym and a um, guy named Cliff, uh, RIP to Cliff. Had, it's kind of crazy. This is how honestly I wanted to like switch to self mode because I feel like I'll be talking to you. Um, so shout out to Cliff because honestly with with him, like this is how I kind of got into the arcade side of it. So um, at our business at the gym, uh, he, he had a bunch of cabinets, like you're talking like 15 cabinets. And this is like before multi kids came out. We had like individual cabinets. He, he, we had a Neo Geo cabinet. Um, we had like, you know, it's one of those cabinets where you could swap out the board. So it kind of didn't even have artwork, which is a black cabinet. Um, but there was one game and I got excited because the Pandora's box has it. Um, there's one game that we would always play me, my brother, my sister, and we would pump quarters into it. And it was Buster Bros. Uh, if you if you never played Buster Bros, it is definitely a cool game, easy game, but it takes like three hours to beat, even if you're playing with two people. So I was playing Buster Bros, then I searched because of Pandora's box, you're able to search. And I looked up Buster Bros, and all of a sudden, there's Super Buster Bros. Super Buster Bros is what we actually had at the gym. So me and my brother and my sister, we pump quarters into this, right? And one day, um, uh, my dad got a beach house and he goes to Cliff, he goes, man, listen, my kids love this game. How much do you want for this game? Because we have to put it in our beach house. And then sure enough, Buster Bros came home with us. So I got freaked out um, because I was playing this, the music came back to me, nostalgia came back to me, and I was like, oh shit, it's Super Buster Bros that we had. Um, again, if you never played it, it's definitely a must play. I thought we had Buster Bros. Uh, and it's honestly, as you can see, it's the same kind of layout. My arm's getting tired. It's the same type of like game, but Super Buster Bros is what we had at the house. So I got super excited and I, honestly, like I spaced out for like 45 minutes. I was shooting the video and then I was playing Buster Bros. And I totally forgot that I was shooting a video. So I was just kind of reliving childhood uh, for a few minutes. Um, but definitely, if you never played Buster Bros, it is definitely a must play. Again, at least two to three hours to beat. There's so many worlds. Do the world tour, you won't regret it. Um, but there you guys have it, honestly. The green room, 32 inch arcade cabinet coming out to them tomorrow. It is like 3.15 in the morning right now. Um, I gotta wrap this thing up because it's raining. But uh, Vic VP, Game Case Arcades. We got a mid-sized Nintendo cab coming up. And I got to work on my Mega Touch. And I need some sleep. <laughs>